And if you see the background of the AAA, it is in yellow color, which means it is not yet configured. See, we just dragged and dropped on the rule, but we have not yet configured. So if you want to configure this, just double hit on this. Okay. So now, what does this AAA stands for? AAA means authentication, authorization, and auditing. Let me write here. Authentication, authorization, and auditing. So once after you receive a message from the client, if you want to authenticate that message to ensure that this message what we received is from a trusted source or not, we can go with this AAA policy. Okay. So at the message level, if you want to authenticate, you will use this AAA action. And again in the AAA can be implemented in various ways. The most commonly and widely used AAA mechanism is by using digital certificates or you can say a signature method. What does the signature method does? See in this scenario your client or the consumer okay, will send a digitally signed message using his private key to data part. He is going to sign a message using his own private key and he will share that signed message to data bar. See, we will see this, like how does a sign, sign message looks like, okay. So, he is going to add a digital signature information into the message and he is going to send that digitally signed message to data bar. Since he is signing a message using his private key and sending it to data bar, he will also share his corresponding public certificate. Okay, clients public certificate will be shared to data part. So now what we do, since we have a public certificate, I will, I will upload it to the third directory. I will create a crypto certificate object, correct? And then I will use it inside crypto validation credentials. So in a, in a digital signature method, if a client is going to send a digitally signed message to data part using his private key, that means if a consumer or the client will use their private key to sign a message and that signed message will be sent to data part. So now when I get a signed message, if I have to verify that it is from a known source, the client will also share his public certificate to us, so which we are going to up upload it to the third directory, create a crypto certificate and we use it inside our crypto validation credentials. Okay. So always crypto validation credentials is to validate the other party. Correct? So we are going to use this particular object configured in order to authenticate a digitally signed message. This is one method. The other method is using an LDAP. In this case, your client will send the username and password as part of WS security header web services security header 
once we receive this message of username and the password we are going to extract the username and the password and we send it to an LDAP server for the authentication so if the correct combination of username and password what your client has been shared if it is present in the LDAP automatically we are going to authenticate that this message is from a trusted source okay see AAA has mainly five steps the first step is how to extract user's identity from an incoming request. How to extract an user's identity from an incoming request. The second step is how to authenticate the user. Okay, how to authenticate the user. The third step is how to extract the resources. If there are any resources being sent as part of the transaction, how do we extract it? The fourth step is how to authorize the request see the second is authentication the th fourth step is authorization and finally the fifth step is auditing so every AAA action will have these five steps to be followed in order to for, have a successful AAA implementation and again in the AAA implementation either you can use a digital signature method or an LDAP integration method depending upon the need and the configuration specifications okay yeah. one more LTPAID key authorization right which one LTPA token mm -hmm. key something yes even in that case your client will share the LTPA token see for example if you see the configuration of this AAA okay, okay. Just double hit on this AAA action on the rule which you have dragged and dropped. It will ask you to configure the AAA policy. So every AAA action will have a AAA policy to be configured. You can see here. So just hit on the plus so that you can configure a new AAA policy. So give a name to your AAA policy first. Let's see. Test. So once you hit on the create, the first step is how to extract an user's identity from an incoming request. See, if you want to use an LTPA token, you will choose this method. Okay. Okay. If you want to use a digital signature method, you will use this option called subject DN from certificate in message signature okay if you want to use a digital signature method subject DN from certificate in message signature if you want to use an username and a password kind of a configuration you will use the second option which is called as password carrying username token element from WS security header right Right. So depending upon the needs, you have all these methods. You can use an LTPA token, you can use an OAuth, or you can use this HTTP authentication header. So depending upon the need, we can use any of these methods. Okay. So the first step, if you see, how to extract a user's identity from an incoming request. So whatever the request that you got, you are going to extract your user's information, identity information. So that might be based upon the header name and user, sorry, that may be based on the username token and the password or with respect to its signature or with respect to an LTPA token. So once you extract the user, inf user information, so in the second step, see, you just need to hit on next. See, when you choose it as a password carrying, sorry, subject DN from certificate in message signature, it will ask you to configure the validation credentials. So this validation credentials should consist of your consumer's public certificate, correct? Whatever the client has been shared to you in order to implement this AAA, that public certificate should be used inside your validation credentials. Followed by, hit on next. The second step, which is how to authenticate the user see the first step is 
how to extract the user's identity. So whatever the user's information that you extracted in the first step, that will be used as a reference here in order to authenticate the user. So here in the previous step, if you used an option called password carrying username token element from WS security header, which we will send it to an LDAP server. You can see here, bind to LDAP server. So whatever the username and the password combination that you received, we are going to send it to an LDAP server. If the same combination of username and password is present, then we are going to authenticate the user. So for that, you have to choose an option called bind to LDAP server, followed by it will ask you to configure your LDAP server details. Like what is the LDAP server host, what is the port number, and all those suffix and prefix details over here. Okay. So you have to update your LDAP server which can be used for this purpose. Followed by, if you are using a digital signature method, that is in the first step if you have chosen it as subject DN in the message signature, over here in the second step you, you choose an option called a validate sign -in certificate for digitally signed message, this particular option. Validate sign -in certificate for digitally signed message. So again, when you choose this option, it will ask you to choose your validation credentials. The same validation credentials what you selected in the first step can be reselected over here again. Okay. See all these methods, like which method do we need to follow? Whether to go with a digital signature or with an LDAP or with some other LTPA token. This will be described at the architecture level and the same kind of configuration will be used for all your clients or consumers. Okay. So the second step is how to authenticate the user. So once after you do that, see if you are using a LTPA token, you can see this first option, accept LTPA token, you will choose that particular method. Okay. Followed by the third step is how to extract the resources. You can see there is an option for you to hit on next, hit on next, so that it will take you to the next page, which is called as how to extract the resources. Over here, we choose an option called URL sent by the client. If there are any resources that is being passed as part of the URL, we are going to extract it with this tab, which is URL sent by the client for extracting the resources. The fourth step, that is the next step is how to authorize the user. So there we select an option called allow any authenticated client. That means if in the previous step if your client has been authenticated within the AAA then you are authorizing him to utilize your data power service. And below that, if you see, there is an option called always allow. So when you select it, even though if your client is not authenticated, you are allowing him to utilize your service, correct? Which should not be the case. So we choose an option called allow any authenticated client. So that only the authenticated client are authorized to utilize our services. And finally, the fifth step is auditing, which is nothing but your login. So every request that passes through your data power appliance, either it might be with the correct credentials or with the incorrect credentials, everything is going to be saved in the logs. You can see here. This see the final step is auditing, where you can see enable logging of allowed access items, enable logging of rejected access items. So by default, every transaction which passes through your AAA policy will be saved in the log files be it be a success or a failure scenario, everything will be captured in the logs. That is your auditing, the fifth step. No need to change anything in the fifth step. Just keep everything as a default and hit on commit. Okay. Hit on done. So now we have configured this AAA policy for this service with the name as test AAA. So you can see now the background color which was highlighted in yellow color, it is disappeared because you have successfully configured this 
object or the action. Clear? Triple A? Any questions? We will test this. When we are discussing about an XML